Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is my second time recording this video, so fingers crossed, second time is the charm and not third time is the charm. All right, so we're going to be doing our next section of the Octarian Anthology. We only have two sections left before we're finished with the book. The next book, so the next couple of weeks, the next book we're going to be starting is the next Tom Kenyon book, which is called The Great Human Potential. This is Walking in One's Own Light, Teachings from the Pleiades and the Hathors, again, written by Tom Kenyon and a woman named Wendy Kennedy. I say a woman named Wendy Kennedy because, as you know, I haven't even read this yet. I It's just one of Tom Kenyon's books, so I got it. And we're going to do this next together as we do on Tuesday. So if you're new to this channel, um, welcome. Very glad that you are here. And on Tuesdays, we go through uh, material, channeled material. The Tuesday playlist is a playlist called Understanding Magdalene, which is down in the description box below. So if you want to catch up on past episodes or past books, then that's there for you. Um, we've done multiple books. So this is our third Tom Kenyon book. We've done the Magdalene Manuscript, the Hathor material, and now we're on the Octurian. So we're going to stick with Tom Kenyon, the last book here before we move to other works we've also done the first book we ever started with was megan waterson's mary magdalene revealed we've also done the sophia code as well as return of the divine sophia all of that is found in the playlist understanding the magdalene now as most of you guys know, because we do go over so many books on this channel, and I reference a lot of books from my research, I get so many questions, where can I find this book? What was that book you spoke about? What is this? What is that? I finally decided something I had been contemplating for a while to become an Amazon affiliate. And so I'm just going to share a screen quickly here just again to show you guys. So this link will be down in the description box below um this is my amazon affiliate page so it's connected to to amazon just like that and so um i have all these different uh sections categories here on my amazon page now as if you if you caught my latest video where i introduced this page um as i said in that video what i've learned is that you can only put a certain amount of up things in one category and so i've had to divide the book section up and then of course i have other things that people have asked me about as well and i'll probably have to do a part two of books used on this show when we start other books so this is this is the section that has books used on the show so we have books that I heavily re reference, uh, like the Cassiopeian. This is the first transcript, volume one, starting in 1994. And we have Laura Knight's uh, Writing the Wave, which I've referenced uh, the raw material from Paul to Mark which is this book that I've used a lot um, for my reference sources. So if you want to get that for yourself, it's a big, thick book, especially if you're moving through that phase where you're deconstructing the church. That's a great one to, to get for your, your own library as well. Um, Mary Magdalene Revealed, again, was the first book we, we looked at. The Emerald Tablets. Here's the Acturian Anthology, what we're finishing up now. And then, of course, here is uh, The Great Human Potential, what we're doing next. Sophia Code. Magdalene Manuscript, Hathor Material. But this one, The Great Human Potential, is what we are going to be reading in the next couple of days. And so with this list, as I have said before, you don't have to necessarily buy from this list. If that's easier for you just to click and purchase directly from my affiliate link, yes, I do get commission off of that. But it's not something that I am requiring anybody to do. Like if you, if there is a, a, a small business in your area or a small business bookshop that you would rather buy from to support that small business, then absolutely, by all means, please use that small business. Um, but with the Amazon, it's a list. So even if you are using a small uh, a small business to order your products, at least you have a list of all the books that I referenced that are right on that affiliate link. So you can just pull it up on your phone. So you can see the books that you're actually looking for when you go into another store, if that makes sense. Now, again, the good thing about Amazon, I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with Amazon. I understand that the owner of Amazon has some questionable practices allegedly but that doesn't mean that everybody in amazon is bad and and amazon itself is is not a sentient being it's just a tool and as we know like as my teacher in india often says like a knife is just a knife you can either use that knife to cut up fruit 
to serve your friends and family, or you can use that knife to hurt someone. So it's your choice what you do with these tools. And I am choosing to use Amazon for good. Um, the booksellers get kicked back from Amazon. As you know, guys know if you saw the other video, I do have a section for books that are written by guests of Esoteric Atlanta. So like Kelly Teal, uh, my friend Kelly Teal from Nexian, her book, or Sant Singh's book, Mark Headley's book is also there, Blown for Good, who is one of the Scientology survivors. And surprise, surprise, we've got some shows coming up I'm very excited about having to do with our our uh, fellow humans who have been in Scientology. So very excited about that. But I went ahead and put his book in there because we are planning on doing stuff. So so you guys have all those reference points in the Amazon affiliate link. It's just going to make it, again, I'm going to reiterate this. Um, for those in the back who didn't hear, you don't have to order off of the affiliate link. It's just a way that keeps everything organized for me and for you, the viewer. So for when someone emails me and said, what was that book you were referencing? I can't remember. I can just send the link. And so you can look through and see all of the reference points. And then if you want to order it from Amazon, it's quick. You just hit the link and order it. Or you can take that and then go to another bookseller and buy it from them. Also, the good thing about Amazon is that it does collect, uh, connect globally. So not just people in the United States have access to it. All, I have a lot of viewers from Europe. And so you guys obviously have access to Amazon too. And, you know, I, I know most of you guys, obviously you guys in Europe, if you're watching my channel, you speak English because I don't speak any other language but Sanskrit, which is a dead language. So, so you obviously your English is pretty fluent. But I do understand that if English is not your first language, that it might be easier for you and your own self-development to order some of these books in your own language, your first language. And Amazon will be able to offer that for you to be able to find if you're German speaking to find the book in German if you need it in German or French or, or whatever that might be. So, um, so yeah, anyway. All right, you guys. So let's get started with part two, the second to last chapter of Sunat Kumara in the Octurian Anthology. You who live upon the earth at this time are the witnesses and to some extent the co-creators of the world in transition. All civilizations must adapt to the changing conditions of the reality if they are to survive. My fellow Octurians have shared with you their perspectives regarding their understandings and their approach to the great mystery. To call it reality is to diminish it, since all realities are relative to the perceiver. Thus the term great mystery refers to all realities simultaneously. What an interesting perspective to consider all viewpoints, even those which are contradictory, with equal footing, and all at the same time. It's a mental exercise that I engage frequently. It has allowed me to perceive new possibilities that normally I would be blind to because of my own perceptions and limitations. The task of embracing all reality simultaneously is, of course, impossible, but we Octurians like challenge, and I have found this particular challenge to be most beneficial by expanding my viewpoints. I invite you to engage in the same mental challenge. At the beginning of this section, I said that all civilizations must adapt to the changing conditions if they are to survive. For we Octurians, the dilemma between the mission and the heart meaning our deepest feelings, is the current quandary for our civilization. And while it does not seem to be threatening our survival, I contend that it is. And that is what I have been saying to the great Octurian Council. How will this play out in our civilization remains to be seen. But I certainly agree with my beloved friend Magdalene when she expects the solution to be intelligent and highly creative. I would expect nothing less from my fellow Octurians. To the collective. In some ways, your civilization faces a similar dilemma, but I wish to turn my attention to a dilemma your global civilization is facing that threatens your very survival. It has to do with the deterioration of your ecosystem. The dangerous decrease of oxygen levels, the decimation of your rainforest, the pollution of your oceans and your air. Whatever your stories may be politically and socially, you are condemning future gener generations to a dismal future. You are at a most critical passage in your planetary evolution. 
You have fragmented cultures and societies that are vastly different from each other and often an anthem both to themselves and others. The old world powers based upon the use of fossil fuels and the wars perpetrated by your hidden bankers and religious leaders continue to poison both the emotional environment of your planet and the literal physical environment as well. It somewhat saddens me to view this situation on your planet, but mostly it makes me angry. Touche, Sunat Kumara. It makes, I think I can speak for those of you watching that have been on this channel for a while. I think I say it makes us pretty angry as well. What St. Magdalene says in her gospel, the wisdom of the wrathful person, meaning we don't act in our anger is supposed to trigger creative change, not vigilante violence. There's a wisdom when you get angry about something, pull the wisdom of that anger out to create change, not violence. My anger is based upon the perception that you have been misled and manipulated by your religions. <laughs> kind of been the theme of our channel here. Absolutely, you guys. I, I think I think you guys know like that's been a huge topic of, of conversation on this channel, the manipulation of our religions. Our religions do not have our best our highest good at heart. It somewhat saddens me to view the situation on your planet, but mostly it makes me angry. And my anger is based upon my perception that you have been misled and manipulated by your religions, especially those that preach that you have dominion over nature. And that is one of my biggest pet peeves. Well, not probably not my biggest pet peeve, but it is one of my many pet peeves with the Christian church, this idea that we have to, they tell us we have dominion over things, like especially animals. No, we don't. No, we're coexisting with other sentient beings. We don't have dominion. We might be of a higher consciousness, and that means that to who to whom much is given, much is expected, we're supposed to protect the second density beings and the third density beings, not control them, not not dominate them. Because what's the root word of dominion is to dominate. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. I've been observing your planet for millions and millions of years. And let me tell you, you have no dominion over nature and nature will destroy you unless you come into a conscious relationship with her changing reality. Your current civilization, and by that I mean your gl global civilization, is like a quilt with many conflicting colors. What you cannot understand, because you lack the perspective of intergalactic history, is that your collective e existence is transient. Not only are you individually subject to decay at the physical level of your biology, and by that I mean your death, but your civilization is subject to decay and annihilation by the forces of nature. Every single one of you watching right now, probably at some point in your education, your academic career, had to study Old Man in the Sea. One of the biggest themes in Old Man in the Sea, if you guys can remember this, is man versus nature. Nature always wins. Man versus man, it's a tie-up, it's a toss-up, but man versus nature, nature always wins. As I said, I have been observing your planet for a very long time, and I have seen glorious civilizations destroyed by the forces of nature, much less at their own hands. As a co collective global society, you seem to be paralyzed. Unable to deal with the reality of your collapsing ecosystem, and quite frankly, this is driven by a biblical delusion. It is if you think you have some divine right to destroy nature according to your own desires. I realize that I am speaking both to an individual who may be reading this or hearing it, and also to the collective. I am not addressing you, the individual, at this moment, but I will shortly. At this moment, I am speaking to your collective history and your delusions that you are somehow invincible above the forces of nature. Now, it may seem like a big jump from the ecological disaster facing you to the heart, but they are intimately intertwined. It is through your human heart that you can feel emotions and a connection to all life. 
Now, let me digress a moment and be very clear in what I am saying. I do realize that your emotions originate in a primitive structure of your brain and not your heart. But your heart is involved, and I speak here as, to your physical heart and to the subtle heart you may know as the heart chakra. It is through your heart, the heart chakra, and your physical heart to some degree that you are connected to all life. It is an empathic intelligence, and those who lack it are unevolved and dangerous to your survival. So those who lack it are the organic portals. And what I want to say here, this is why we have to be very careful about saying something like love is the only answer, because of our mental our mental brain, the way that our, our mind will, will com confuse us, the yoga to the Rodaha. And when we have narcissists or sociopaths or organic portals who are trying to go negative there because the darkness can't create anything right only the light can so they're going to manipulate this idea of love right and they're going to put you into situations that force your own destruction through enslavement or through martyrdom and that's not love although they're going to make you think it's love so the more most important thing to, 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 to find that sense of the heart chakra is to go through healing and learning. So you understand the boundaries of your own thoughts or how your thoughts can be manipulated and, and end up making you do things that are not for your highest good or not for the highest good of those around you that aren't really love. And so I just I, I like that he said that about it's mostly connected to your mind. And so we have to understand that, that the thoughts we have are not the soul. Right. It's not the inner the thoughts we have. We, we don't believe everything you think. Right. The, the mind is just a, a it's just a muscle. Right. The, 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 the purpose of the organ of the brain is to problem solve. Right. It's it's literally for this existence in the here and now moment. It's not forever. So I just wanted to make that very clear. Um, again, please do your research into that. Please read the ancient text. A good text on that would be the Bhagavad Gita. Um, also, the Yoga Sutras, of course, talks a lot about the, the complexities of the mind and the negotiation patterns of the brain and how we confuse that for what we think is the soul. Um, and so just make sure you're researching that so you're not giving energy away. You're not giving up your power to, to an entity that wants to enslave you, right? Because allowing yourself to be enslaved is putting yourself in what they call a pecking order. And a pecking order, like having a king or a queen or having even our government system, having these pecking orders is oriented in the negative. So it's oriented in fourth density negative, which is service to self, okay? Service to others where everyone is equal and it is based on the true heart chakra and not the thought of love, but the heart chakra is social memory complex where there is no pecking order. Okay, let me say that again. There is no pecking order. So when, when you're looking at the manipulation of love for the negative, it's any type of, of thought process or organization that's going to make you think that love is going to force you to be martyred to yourself or enslaved to somebody else or it's anything that gives up your own individual sovereignty um, that puts you in the slave mentality which again is fourth density negative not positive so just you know that's just be, be very careful with that as I look at the acceleration of your planetary technologies, I am gravely concerned for your future well-being, not due to the use of technology. Again, yeah, technology isn't a sentient being. It's just a tool. It's how you use it. We Arcturians use technology constantly, but my concern is how you are using it and the hidden agendas behind your technology. Technology, especially the telecommunications and the computer technologies, are increasingly used as mind control 100 we know a lot about that don't we and the further you go into your mind without connection to your heart the more deeply you enter dangerous territories i saw this in atlantis and i hope you do not repeat that error your technologies are different but are similar enough to pose concern for one who has been assigned with a mission of protecting this sector of space it is your major world religions, especially those Judaic, Christian, and Islamic origin, who are unable to transcend themselves and forge a new version of humanity, then at the very least, they must cultivate planetary stewardship over dominion. This is an intelligence test. And before we go any further to Sunat Kumar's message to the individual, I do want to take a brief moment to give a special, special, special thank you to our sponsors of this channel, ASEA. ASEA 
because of their sponsorship, that is the reason why you get to watch my videos for free. Um, Asia is providing that for you. So a very, very special thank you to, to Asia who make this channel possible. I love the Asia product. It's a redox supplement. And more on what that redox supplement is before we get into the note to the individual. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired, after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asia's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. 
with the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius that in my opinion, they really, really honored and respected God's design. Because you see, when you take the liquid redox, you are allowing your body its own intelligence. Because the redox is just a tool. It's just the signaling for your cells. Your cells, your body is designed to heal itself. And this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself. And so when you take the liquid, your body knows exactly where it needs to send the redox. What part of your body is wounded? What part of your body isn't so stable? And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, Product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and J or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside of the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. All right, you guys, now back to Sunat Kumara, to the individual. Now I am speaking to the individual who is reading this or having it read to you.
as far as I know, I'm the only one online right now reading this book. So it's kind of wild that he even brought up if you're having this book read to you. So it, it kind of gave me gave me some some goosebumps. So anyway, let me let me start that again. Now I am speaking to the individual who is reading this or having it read to you. I realize that you may feel completely impotent before the massive forces both from nature and from your human ignorance, so I wish to be clear that I am not condemning you. But I do suggest you look into your heart more deeply. Find a place where you feel connected to other life. It may be that you do this with plants because you cannot tolerate humans. This is fine. The botanical kingdom is a rich field of intelligence that can instruct you. Indeed, the botanical realm has existed far longer than the human, and I might, might add it is far more intelligent at its task for survival. The enigma you face as an individual is that you are both within your own reality and the culture and historical realities of your civilization. And this point in human evol evolution has reached a crescendo where the powers of the mind are being further separated from the powers of the heart. And although I have said this before, it bears repeating here. It is in your human heart that you possess empathic intelligence. Exactly. So once again, we have to be really, really clear about this. We cannot say that love is the only answer because we are messing with a programmed mind, a mind that has been programmed from the powers that be that do not have your highest good at heart, literally at heart. Right. And so going through a path of healing yourself, understanding the yoga to the Narodaha of your own thoughts will help you better understand what true love from an empathetic standpoint looks like instead of the manipulation of love. We see the manipulation of love all the time in cults. Right. It's 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 trying to get you enslaved. And I know the exercise he's about to talk about learning how to communicate with these other beings that don't speak our language will help you understand that inherent feeling versus the, the, the traps of the mind. So that's I just want to make that clear. Someone with empathic intelligence knows it is a heinous form of stupidity to pollute the very ecosystem you are trying to live in. That is the line in the sand. This is the first signature of, of empathic intelligence. And anyone who fails to recognize this is an idiot, evolutionarily speaking, or they're going on a service to self path. A higher form of empathic intelligence experiences the other forms of life and honors and recognizes them as fellow travelers through the great mystery. You as an individual affect the collective by how you think, how you feel, and how you act in the world. Make no mistake about it. Every single human being on your planet is affecting your collective perception of reality and the possibilities for your collective destiny. This happens at a micro quantum level. And while it is true that political figures and religious figures can move the world more directly and seemingly more powerful than any individual or group of individuals, this is increasingly a type of illusion. No one's coming to save you. If you still think someone's coming to save you, you're living in an illusion or a delusion, I should probably say. I say this because your technology is empowering individuals in new ways never imagined by those who created this technology. And so my advice from a longtime friend is to look more deeply into your heart and to form some type of relationship with something natural, like a plant or a forest or an animal, and let your heart feel the relationship. The plant and animals will help you to develop your empathic intelligence. How you do this will be different from everyone else, so I cannot give a blanket suggestion that will cover everyone. But here is one simple suggestion I can think will work for most people. I suggest you do this in solitude away from other human beings. You humans tend to have a barrier-like veil or shield that you pull over yourselves when in the presence of another human. You pretend to be something that you are not in order to fit into something you think is real, but in many cases, it is not real at all. So this way of working with your heart would best be done away from other human beings. Again, it's not real because it's the illusion of your mind. It's your delusional thinking, right? But when you're with a dog or a tree, that goes away. That goes away, right? So you're not, you're not kind of 
it, it, there's no interference there from some something that's going to take you off course or manipulate manipulate you. If you are fortunate enough to live near a forest or a natural setting, you can use this. If you have a pet, an animal, a, a physical, biological animal, not a biotech animal toy, but a living, breathing animal that you have a fondness for, you can do this. If you have neither access to nature or to an animal, you can acquire a plant. And then, and then you sit in nature or sit with your animal or sit with the plant and move your awareness to your heart. And then your awareness will pop and move around in your mind like a marble and you bring it back down to your heart. For some of you, this may take a long time, but eventually something will click, so to speak, and you will feel a wave of feeling for the natural setting around you or for the animal or for the plant. And eventually you will sense a connection, a recognition that you are with other life forms or a life form. And this recognition is the beginning of empathic intelligence. Your civilization may be moving to self-destruction and disconnection from its own collective heart, but you are not required to be a part of it. And if in the midst of the madness that is your time on earth, historically speaking, you develop your empathic intelligence, you will in some mysterious way affect the collective. And you do this through micro quantum effects. It is not some fuzzy warm idea. It's physics. The minutest shift within an atom can affect a molecule, which can in turn affect the whole structure. And so I find myself in the most interesting and poignant situation. I am honored to have such direct access through your language to communicate with you this way. I've been protecting this sector of the space for millions and millions of years, as I said earlier. Being a star commander undertaking the mission was my prime focus. And when I had my experience with Isura, my heart was open, but I did not know what to do with it in the face of the mission. I chose the mission because that is what star commanders do. And so for those who have been around for this whole reading, you know, he's referring back to part one of his storytelling. And so if you missed that and you want to hear his whole story, Sunat Kumara's story, um, that will be down in the description box below in the playlist, Understanding the Magdalene Under Show Notes. Um, I will also probably tag that at the end of this video. So if you stay towards the end at the end credits, I usually tag a couple of videos in reference to whatever the topic was, was we were speaking about in the prior video. So you can easily if you just wait till the end click on it when it comes up on the screen and it'll take you directly to that episode and in the great grand council speaking to my fellow octurians i expressed my dilemma and many others expressed the same dilemma once i opened the door for discussion i find it oddly humbling and most telling from an evolutionary standpoint point that my great octurian civiliz civilization shares the same foible as you a developing intergalactically seeded species. Our technologies dwarf yours. To us, you are still in the Stone Age, and yet both we Octurians and you humans must come to a resolution between our minds and our hearts. How ironic. I leave you with this irony. It is up to us, to we Octurians, to find our own resolution in this quandary. Ultimately, our survival will depend upon it, although that threat is not immediate. You, on the other hand, as a collective, are facing an immediate threat to your collective survival as a viable biological species. You must find your own resolution to this quandary. You must find your own resolution to this quandary. No one's coming to save you. You have to do it. You have to save yourself. You must find a bridge to your mind and heart. To those of you reading this or hearing it read to you, who have found the courage, who have decided to find the courage to live with empathic intelligence, I salute you. In my more meditative state, I would bow to you, but I am not in a meditative state as I dictate these final words. I speak to you as a star commander who was assigned to protect your galaxy long before your recorded history began. It has been an honor to serve both you and the Acturian High Council. I do not think it is a coincidence that our two species and cultures face the same dilemma between the mind and the heart. I take comfort in the knowledge that we Acturians rise to challenges, and the more difficult the challenges, the more committed we become to resolving it. I trust the growing number of individual human beings 
will wake up from the miasma of your civilization and with courage and fortitude you will find a new way to live with nature and with the intergalactic community before we enter into a battle or before undertaking a very difficult course of action we sometimes say to each other a phrase it is of course communicated holographically and telepathically but if i were to translate to your human language i would translate it thusly may all possibilities be open to you the expectation of this creates the probability of a resolution and so i say to you in parting may all possibilities be open to you humanity is at the genesis of its own future <laughs>